of opportunity. This harbour has been the gateway for millions of people around the world. They sailed here to seek their fortune. Now, six skippers fly their flag. In the fastest race on water! Six athletes who lead their team through the Hudson, battling the currents, the tides and the wind shifts battling each other. Their fortune? One step closer to a coveted trophy and a $1 million prize. Welcome to New York Sail GP. Hello and welcome to the third event of the Sail GP calendar. For this round, the world's fastest sailing competition has come to the city that never sleeps, New York. We have six teams in the world's most technologically advanced hydrofoiling catamarans. These are F50s and the teams are vying for the top position on the leaderboard and, of course, the million dollar prize purse. After two events, Tom Slingsby's Australian team topped the leaderboard, four points ahead of their arch rivals, Japan. Dylan Fletcher's British team lay in third and just eight points separated the three teams in the lower half of the table. We're bringing you all the drama from two action-packed days of racing. There were three fleet races on day one with all six boats competing together and two more on day two before the top two teams went head-to-head -head in the final winner-takes-all match race to draw the New York Sail GP to a close. Gusty conditions were very much the order of the day on New York's Hudson River for the opening race of the Grand Prix. And as the boats left the shore, the Brits learned the hard way just how strong the wind was. A capsize before the start left their wing severely damaged, which meant they had to retire from day one. A devastating blow for the Brits. We were just heading downwind, having um, done some nice jibes and got hit by a 37 knot gust apparently on the box and struggled to control it and then ultimately ended up down the mine and in the drink. For the rest of the teams, it was business as usual. As the clock counted down for the start, the boats jostled for positions in the strongest winds they had raced in to date. Let's hand over to the commentators, Jody Shields and Shirley Robertson. I mean, yeah. how do you judge your time and distance? Electronics are useless. It's real seat of the pants to sailing here. And we'll look here, we've got Australia. Tommy Slings, he's trying to get that pin in. He's going for a bit of a ride. Japan is in the middle. Everyone's a little bit tentative because they just know what they're about to go out to in the middle of this course. Looks like Australia might get the whole shot and we are off and racing. Japan in the middle, France, a nice job up the top. China not foiling, USA not foiling. USA have got a new wind trimmer so they've got a little bit on. Australia, nice job there, off and running. Here's the battle already between Australia and Japan. Look at the wind difference, Jody. I mean, Australia just came a cropper there. They hit a massive, a massive punch of wind. You can see there in the, uh, on the screen, there's no wind where Australia are. Japan have been lucky here. They've been able to go through and keep foiling. And it looks like they're going to get to this first mark in first place. France are nearly going to go over. They need to save oh, that. Very close moment there for Team France. What's oh, happening okay. is the wind is coming over the shore, literally exploding on the top of these guys' wings. And they cannot even see the wind hit them. So they're almost sailing blind. It is very, very sketchy out here, that's for sure. USA coming into third spot. China into fourth, France look like they're not coming out of the spot, they might have done something wrong. We're just coming on all replay here, you see Japan coming along. And they're trying to get through around this mark, you look at Australia in behind them there, Japan jiving off early. Australia who was second at the bottom mark, have now got a 100 metre lead within no time of their nearest rival in Japan. And Australia look like they're going to the left hand top mark. Then they've got no run out from the top mark down to the boundary. It's very, very close, so they need to get out of here as quick as they can. Okay, almost on the boundary. Now, Tom Slingsby did well there. He strung together the puffs, which has got to be the ideal here. And of course, much confidence in his team. He can sail in any condition. And have a look at that. Japan are 
absolutely nothing. They cannot foil, they're hardly moving. Meanwhile, Australia are heading downhill, probably about 25 to 30 knots on what at this stage could be a uh, quite comfortable lead because no one else seems to be in breath. And there we are, Australia just absolutely flying straight down the course in what looks like a really nice puff there, Shirley. So we're probably going to go left turn. Hard okay, gust here, chop a puff with it. And let's stand by, I'm going to take it pretty safe here. Coming. And you heard there the comms. Just stay trying to listen to the guys as they go through this drive. Turn there. Let us know about the lock. They're keeping it safe, Jody, aren't they? Because you cannot see these puffs and they've got huge intensity. And here we go, the Chinese and Japanese have finally made it back up to this top mark. They're only 150 metres away, but they're absolutely drifting up here. And it almost looks like they're on separate tacks. One breeze is coming from the left, one breeze looks like it's almost coming from the right. Japan have got no wind at all. China trying to tack in around that left-hand top gate. I think we may well see the Japanese offer that right-hand gate just to avoid another drive. And China around, they need to get out of there. Good work by Phil Robertson, he didn't have a very good race down in San Francisco. And he is absolutely up for a redemption. Australia are down around that bottom mark and heading back up the top for the second time with a nice lead, almost a full leg ahead, Shirley. Australia just got hit by a massive gust just as they come into the thing and they literally slid sideways. They just hit the zone, the boat slid sideways and I think they might have just dodged a bullet there, to be honest, Australia. That was pretty scary. You see them just trying to get up now. They're, that's very dangerous. Bow goes right down. The flight controller, Jason Waterhouse, having all sorts of dramas trying to keep this boat level and flat. They've got so much on these guys at the moment. And Australia are slowly but surely working their way up. Maybe one more tack into that top go, and then a big reach in towards New York. For a very uh, happy win for them guys. They'll be glad to get this one over. Well, that's for sure. The next cross, but we'll be there, but should be okay. So much chat on board. We're not used to that from the guys they at the front. The bank, they have to right communicate what's happening. Yeah, we heard Jason on. there saying, it's getting funky, it's going to get difficult. Yeah, the guys are very, very nervous about sailing in these very, very short course, very, very tricky wind direction. And uh, it's, it's certainly showing from the comms on board. Straight attack there for their last time. And what they've got to be careful of here, you'll see on the screen there, there's light air, light patches of air right on this next turn of mark. 20 metres in front of that, there's 15 to 20 knots. Up above that, it could be 30. Now, this is going to be that real power zone angle coming into this, into this finish mark. So, anything could happen here, surely. Okay, coming into more pressure here, boys. Okay, line patch at two, one. And big puff on at three, two, one. Puff on. My bailout's up. And look how loose okay, this boat is coming across into this finish line. Mm -hmm. They've got swell to contend with. They've got everything. They've got gusts of wind. And they've got the wind of this race just sitting there. They just need to get this boat through. And they've got a hard wall. They have to make a massive left hand turn here. Watch the bow of that boat just going up and down. Jason Waterhouse has got his work cut out. And there they go. Through the finish line. The very, very relieved bunch of sailors on that boat, that's for sure. Happy just to cruise here, no stress from behind. Here there from Nathan Harry, just happy just to get this one under the belt as well. <laughs> hey, let's get through here, big puff coming, eh? Yep. They're just about to get a big bit of pressure. Coming in towards the finish. Australia are having their lollies and their chocolates. They're all right. They've got their number in, but Japan are just going to go over the finish line now. The second spot. So, Tom Slingsby took the opening race on day one, and it was just as dramatic as it was billed to be. Let's see what race two has in store. We have a race unfolding right in front of us. And as you can see, Japan are wearing their penalty, so they have to wash it off once the race has started. They have to be one boat length behind, sorry. The rest of the fleet, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Rome Kirby's 
with his new wing trimmer. It looks like he's going to have a great start here. And they are off. Well done to Rome and the USA team there, Shirley. Great start. Really tough for him. You know, he's got a, an alternate in, and you see he's struggling already to keep the ball flying. Straight off the start, it is Billy Besson and then a French team leading he'll be so happy that he's got this boat in the first position they have struggled a fair bit but look at the boats they're going up they're foiling within five meters they're just dropping off in the lulls they've got so much on i don't know how good your french is there shirley but i'm pretty sure you're saying i think he's saying there's a big puff of wind for this fairway we can see it from this helicopter shot yeah i'm running with that as well that's exactly what he said to french in first japan after having their penalty they're in the second spot so there's the lottery it's the first reach they've started one lap boat length behind everyone already they're in second spot but that's going to change we know that for a fact china in third australia in fourth usa after leading off the start sitting it down at dead last we've had three lead changes in one leg already it's insane <laughs> Australia, Japan, China, all trying to get over this right-hand side. France have jived off in nothing, absolutely nothing. USA are coming down, and they've just had a moment. They just put the bows in. <laughs> the, the wind is just exploding. Looks like they've actually missed the bottom gate here, Shirley. What's going on there? I think absolutely right. Just as they were going to jive, they got hit by that big, big puff of pressure. Uh, and so slightly late on jive coming across, but still going at a good pace. Look at the Australians. Two holes in. So the team that got the penalty off the start started last. First bottom gate, they are into the gate in first position. Great race between China and Australia. France are in fourth, USA in fifth. Japan now around the bottom left hand mark. Australia coming in super hot. This has got all of that. So much pressure on that top of that wing. Big bear away uh, round up there for Australia. Oh, so much happening. So it's all changed now. Japan still leading. China in second. USA in third. Possibly just in front of Australia once they tack on that other shore. You can hear Nathan there just coaching the ball. Just always coaching the China. Keep the boat steady. Looks like China are in a nice bit of pressure off their hip there. Tony has a lot of decisions to make. And normally you can just kind of follow the playbook. But in this sort of racing, you're going to have to discuss it. You're going to have to make sure everyone knows what's going on. Australia are catching up. Up. They're coming back. The rivalry is continuing. How does it always work out that these pair of boats always seem to be right next to each other? It is incredible. This will run and run. I mean, they're such high quality. Stand by. There is not a weak link anywhere. Really good breeze out. You see there, Tom is really turns the boat pretty hard to get that thing around. Right. Like they picked up a little bit of a left hand shift in the middle of the course, which is going to take them straight up towards the marks where they really right. will be hoping that they can get to as quick as they can because they don't want to see that green boat with that beautiful kangaroo. He's looking, on the Johnny, board. he's looking behind. He's, he's worried. He knows exactly he where right the Australians are. Yeah, he's definitely worried, as you should be, because you can oh, sit down. down. Yeah, you just heard Nathan there that the Aussie just sat down as well. Let's just listen in to see what their train of thought is here. Two, one, Look at the Aussies, Jody. Four knots in full speed. As you said, they need, they need 15, 16 to get, to get up on the wheels. So Japan got through that little patch. They are just foiling, putting some serious metres in their Australian arrivals at this stage. Australia aren't careful. China could come and still second spot. Anything is possible at this stage. So there's a little bit of breeze coming in towards the Australian. No, 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 right no, in front of the Australian boats. So just about to get this breeze now. Jason Walter is the flight controller. We just saw him there. He is fully locked in to watching that lured bow. In San Francisco, he didn't even know how they were getting on. 
<laughs> to ask at the finish. He's so concentrated, and today his eyes are not coming off that bow at all. Chappelle attack for the final time coming in to the top mark. In not much breeze. So they're just hoping they can turn this boat around, head that thing in towards the finish, and get over the finish line for a first win here in New York City. With very limited time on the water for most of these teams, especially Japan and Australia. They've done not much practice race here in New York, that's for sure. Big, big duck patch to their left, and here it is, the top of the ring. Bearing the boat away there, just get it up and go forward and up. And that's where the flight controller has to catch the lift. As the boat increases, he's got to catch it. Finally coming up into the low. Well controlled there. Beautiful work there by Nathan. I love this job. You hear Parker there saying, I love this job. They're still having fun, these boys. And there it is. Japan over for a win in race number two here in New York City. Look at this. The battle for second place continues. Australia are coming in around that top mark. Phil Robinson and his boys, I, I can't get over how close they were to lose that fight. Don't want another capsize. We've already lost Great Britain today, but we don't want to reduce this fleet anymore. We want to see race three. Yeah, line pass here, boys. And then nice puff building in three, two, one, big puff. Oh, Holding. Three starts to soften in the middle. Two, one, pretty steady for the finish. Landing us out a little bit. And light patch. Turning up in two, one, turning up. Oh. Oh. Right at the end, they just put the bow in just, just in case someone was pretty hot and they all wanted to uh, get a drink, as we say. So Australia in for second spot. Incredibly close racing here in New York. Everyone has got their sights set on a place in tomorrow's match race. And don't forget, there's a million dollar prize for the 2019 Sail GP champion. Let's talk about points. Six countries, five events, one million dollars up for grabs. At each Sail GP, the six teams all race for points in an event race. The winner gets 10 points, nine per second. Finish last, you get five points. Then repeat. Three more event races, up to 50 points up for grabs. The two teams with the most points go head to head for the final match race. The winner gets glory, fame, and more points. The match race winner always finishes with at least one more point than the next best team. These points all add up to the final in Marseille. The Australians are off to a flying start in this competition, winning their home race in Sydney before topping the table in San Francisco in event two. Three events remain as Sail GP hits New York City. Winner takes all for a million dollars and the first champions of Sail GP. On to the final race of the day. Let's go back to the commentators, Jody Shields and Shirley Robertson. 15 seconds, Australia trying to protect that bottom end. Phil Robertson in China coming up and might give the Japanese a little bit of an issue here. Tommy Slingsby, Australia's holding an air run up. Phil Roberts has pulled the bow around first and got the start. Well done to China. Phil Robertson after nearly putting that boat in the water, he's leading this race. But obviously never deterred him. He hasn't been uh, too spooked about putting the bows in, that's for sure. The Aussies were just slightly too early on their approach. And, you know, in this kind of conditions, you cannot use the instrument. It's all seat of the pants. So here they are, China. Can he hold on to this lead and take this thing into the first mark? in first place for a big confidence boost for that team. It's China in first, Japan in second, Australia in third, France in fourth, and the local team in the USA uh, coming fifth, Shirley. Great leg by the Chinese. They, they brought in a wing trimming coach, Paul Campbell James, a British guy who was in the last America's Cup. And to me, you can see the difference. They look a oh. He's done it again. He just launches. As he goes into that jive, he just goes up and the bow just launches in. That is so close to putting that thing in the water. Kiss the day. I was about to say they'd go a lot smoother. <laughs> the commentator's curse has struck again. 
It's opened the door for Japan. So we're, we're going to get a replay here of what just happened with the, uh, the team China. But look at that. It's the reverse of what happened on the last one. Went from start to point. This one's going to start. But like, we certainly had some close calls at Team China, but that's for sure. Japan already at the bottom mark. It's such a short race track. <laughs> get in there very, very quick. That's for sure. China's coming into some breeze. You just see the wings getting eased out rather quickly there as they start lifting that hull. They don't want that gust of breeze to come in and just smash on top of that wing and tip the boat over. Bow in there. Right? Japan, they look a little bit loose coming up to this tack. Just going around the top of it. America there, who looks like they might just low ride the whole race. And Jody you mentioned it before, there's so much comms. Everybody has to be on the same page. You see there what you said about uh, Tom Slingsby not liking being back down the pack. The data shows him currently in third spot. If you can get over that right-hand side and pick a nice bit of pressure here, you put the, put the uh, wind right up China coming in this this uh, top go. Japan haven't made the top, so that tells you there's a massive big left hand shot over there. Oh. You hear that? Phil Robinson saying, try and settle it. Good luck. Oh my God. Australia tapping now on the imaginary main line. While Japan is coming around the top mark. Cross here between Australia and China. Massive gain by the Aussies, huge amount of pressure, and now they're lifted as well, you know, look at their angle. Yeah, China had a pretty slow attack, so the Australians look like they've got a nice bit of pressure over their right-hand side, so they should be able to roll over the top of China here and come into the second. Have a look at the leeway, you see the boat sliding sideways there. That's a great shot there. You could also see the current as well, the current is down the Hudson, you can see that on the bottom, it's two or three knots of current. Australia look like they're going to tack over and go back in towards the New York side. They don't like what they see on the left. And what will China do? China's going to tack as well, so they're going to go and chase the Australians. So everyone wants to get back down into that New York side of the course. And that's where the Japanese, who are currently leading this race, that's where they went. And I'm guessing that they're not going to be too far from that bottom mark. Here goes the tack for the final time. Japan coming in to the top yep. marks. And you hear there, Ian Gentry say, my world. So let's let right. know it's time for him to cross the boat. Right. Got it. So you can hear there the, the transfer of, of controls from each sailor to the other. They just got to make sure. That each, that each other boat, no, or each other person, sorry, on the boat knows whose actual job it is to control these things. All right, you call it from here, guys. And Australia coming in about 150 metres in towards the finish. They're pretty happy. They're going to set up for the second win of the day. And listen to the uh, elation on board there, Shirley. Setting up. Yeah. What a win, what a schooling for the other boats. What a performance from the Japanese and from their skipper, Nathan Outerid. Very impressive. Two losses for this man though, Tom Slingsby. He was not used to that. Series winner, won the last two events very much to win here in New York. One, two, two there for the Aussies. They'll be, uh, they'll be sort of happy with that, I guess. That one, one, two to the Japanese. Great comeback, though. Great boat speed and, uh, you know, real class acts. Absolutely. Well, fourth and uh, looking ugly there at one stage. So, never discard the red-haired Tom Slings, but that's for sure. He's a lot of fight in that dog. That is no doubt about that. So Nathan Outridge and the Japanese team managed the tricky conditions best today in New York, and that places them at the top of the leaderboard, with the Aussies in second and China in third. 
Yeah, it was a really good day. I think um, it's quite tricky, to be honest. It was not so easy, but um, our goal was to be in the top two after day one with no breakages, and um, you know, it's nice to be able to do that. I think the best part about today was that it was actually a lot of fun on board. It was quite um, scary at times. It was kind of not really an ideal racetrack, but we had a good time and happy with the results. Well, day one was full of high drama. A capsize before the race started meant the Brits had to retire for the day. And very tricky conditions out on the Hudson River race course meant that all the crews had their work cut out just to survive. What will day two have in store? The teams will have been debriefed, prepped and fired up, ready to do battle again. The British shore team have worked hard all night to fix the breakages after yesterday's capsize. And word is that they are back up and running. Boat's in good shape, the tech team and shore crew have done an incredible job working through the night to get all the fairings back together, get the wing back together, so um, you know, there's some final touches to do and, and no doubt we'll have some more work to do on the water, but uh, yeah, we're going racing. Out on the Sail GP New York race course today, we will have two more fleet races with all six boats battling it out together, followed by a winner-takes-all head-to-head match race for the top two place teams. The sailors are expecting slightly lighter wind conditions today, but with plenty of those big gusts to keep them on their toes. Let's hand it over to your commentators, Jody Shields and Shirley Robertson. And here we go for the start. So it's China. Phil Robertson is getting down to the leeward side. Japan are in the middle. That's and we are run. away for race number four. And it's yep. a nice yep. start there by China. Japan already <laughs> doing 39 knots, heading over to this first mark. Impressive start by the Japanese, you know, the top speed there. We heard them in the pre-start talking about pulling the trigger, about get, crossing that line as fast as they can, and they have nailed that. They have indeed. France didn't have a very good start at all, but China and Japan are off over here, and it looks like Japan, the guy who won a couple of races yesterday, Nathan Outridge and co, are going to be first in to this first mark, and then heading on down to a very, very tight bottom market. Not much room between that first jive mark and where we're going to be seeing them going into the gate. So it's Japan, then China. China's going early. That's quite interesting. Japan is going with them. And you just see them not being able to go through that. Coming up it's coming very, up. very light. Very, very patchy it's as it was yesterday. You see that light patch right. Japan yep. is in. The water is glassy. Where we see the puffs, the shadow, that's where the maximum pressure is. And China have Rounding stormed up. ahead. They have to do that. The early drive for China Three. certainly paid off. Right. Phil Robertson obviously seen a nice One, gust two, and decided to go in it and has paid big dividends because okay. it's China okay. into the bottom oh, mark for the there, first time. Early and tack, here, away Phil. they go. They've got a heavy lead for, for first lap, that's for sure. Australians look right back in it. They've done a great job. For China. No. They were yeah. leading and they've just Two fallen into one of those lulls that you, you were talking about. Japan are doing the same. Australia, who were a fair way back in third, not that long ago, uh, coming around the top mark in first place. Mr. Tom Slingsby and his crew are uh, fired up for today. How excruciating is it to be sitting there? The Japanese and the Chinese boat hardly moving, watching the Australians the just yep, sail away. Stay patient, boys. Stay patient. See what the next yeah. gust, see where it's coming from. I just don't think we we're going to be able to attack. It was interesting right that Japan yeah, were looking at going at going that right-hand gate, yep. and they've bailed out of that and come uh, down to the left-hand one. Turn it hard, we'll get a little bit of uh, Nathan and crew not want the Aussies to get away from him, or just trying to link these breezes up. Look at that, look at how compressed Peace everything is all of a sudden. The, the, the breeze has just dropped off the at breath. the worst possible yep, time. Okay, nice. should get flow here in a minute. Japan might go straight up the the back of Great Britain, who are parked Happy at the to top take light up. When it hits, it'll hit hard. Copy. You know, when there's breeze, these boats fly on those massive okay, boards. When there's so no breeze, no dip at the there's moment. a whole heap Copy. of drag China's under the boat, it, yeah. so hard to get it going. And so these three boats have around. certainly got a bit of pressure. They're all China's heading China's downhill at 30 odd knots. With, with that spectator right boat in the background, the Australia just going over right the top of Japan market. there as we speak. It won't take longer than 200 metres away from this pot of mark. They're setting up now for Australia for a drive by the looks of it to get into the gate. So it looks like they're going to go over to the right hand gate as we look at it downhill. They want to get back over to that jersey side. 
looked like he'd done it. He's a little bit low into that uh, into that um, lay line there, so that cost him a little bit there, Tommy, in the Australian boat. Yeah, here we go. We can't see it in the shot, but he is obviously seeing something he likes on that left-hand side. Looks like Japan is setting up. Oh, well, They've just gone right. through, sorry, their last tag. It'll take them up to the gate for the second time. Another lap to go yet, so. I think we're clear on Australia. All right. I'm happy to go right, Mark. Early job. Yeah, you just heard there Nathan Arry okay, saying he thinks mark. he's clear on Australia. He's going to go around the right mark, which he probably should have done in that first time, and just head on back in towards New York because he right, feels the pressure is line. better out in that left hand side of the course. He's actually extended his lead there, Shirley. One, here we go. We've seen the Japanese team lead day one on both events so far. And obviously won yesterday. Can they hold on today? Find out. Come into a nice bit of pressure just as they get around its final mark. And then he should head in towards the big crowds that are on the shore here in New York for a win for race number four, if nothing goes wrong. If you've been following the series, you'd be used to these boats flying a Good lot pressure. higher. We'll run higher. So we don't run um, out of but here, high. they're sailing very differently. Lower Two. to the water. One. You want Pressing as much here. rudder as you can. They're not bow down either. You need rudder because you've got to steer around all the changes in wind angle uh, and in wind velocity. So that's why you're seeing the difference. And they are happy on board. Listen to them. They're very happy. Turbulent. Turbulent. And there it is, Japan take race number four here in New York. Well done. First place for Japan and second for Australia puts both of these teams straight through to the match race final. But the home crowds want to see USA climb up the leaderboard. They've been struggling to find form here. But one thing is for sure, there's no shortage of talent on board the American boat. What is it? Oh, <laughs> whole family the in the America's Cup. I actually don't remember that picture, but I do remember that day. Does remember what he had for breakfast. <laughs> that was taken at the cookhouse in downtown Newport when we had the cup here. All the guys, you know, with our team have a gold card to the cookhouse. I never use it. Trust me, they all know who he is. He gets he gets his fair share of free drinks. Welcome to Newport, Rhode Island. Rome Kirby, free drinks forever. Pretty fortunate to grow up here. Between the sailing, the hockey, the beaches, and the surf, you know, it's a pretty cool place. So I would bike down to Sail Newport, the community sailing center, and go jump in a boat. Like, actually, like we did today, and go bang around and go sail. No, you're not. It's a race. It's always a race. Zero preparation. Ooh, I don't have my cell phone, do I? I don't think I'm going to be able to get my boat on the dolly. Just judging by the amount of water in the boat, I think that I won. Who knows what catches your attention as a kid, but I'd go down to the waterfront, see these really cool boats, and then I did notice that they had great parties and the, all the chicks were hanging around the scene. I said, that's, you know what? I'm going to go get on one of those boats and do that stuff. That generation kind of paved the path for all of us. You know, CLGP wouldn't exist if it wasn't for those guys. To win the America's Cup is a huge achievement. And when they won in 92, it was kind of like, I was like, huh, oh, I want to do that. That's pretty cool. I can remember standing next to the cup. I kind of remember stuff like tugging on, like, Dad, Dad. I can't remember back that far. <laughs> no, uh, it was awesome. You know, you sort of look back, you see the pictures of the 92 Cup, and then you look at the current boats. It's just two completely different weapons. What these guys are doing on the foiling boats is just next level. Just their, the physical demands. It's a whole nother skill set that these guys are bringing. If he had his choice, he would have me play hockey. Let's be honest. I didn't want you to quit hockey because you were a good hockey player. Yeah, I was well, like, I said, hey, you I know. I loved hockey. And Rome's like, I want to be a pro sailor. So it's like, it doesn't work out for everybody, you know? Try everything else. We can just turn this. We don't even have to talk about sailing. We'll flip the script. We can talk about, was he wild? All right, so growing up, I played serious hockey till I was 17. And then sometimes he was playing men's hockey. It's in the other bench, full punch up, just 
used to tie our wakeboard tow lines to the back of the truck and he used to tow us around and we'd be on our snowboard just like and he has this like fully retrofitted gunboat and then the thing just like fully does a roll like pops out and he's like whoa he loses it <laughs> you're like your dad's nuts i'm like yep <laughs> i don't get in fights anymore when you're 63 i mean i'm more likely to give him a hug than punch anybody now <laughs> Let's get back into the action for the final fleet race of the Sail GP New York. Can the Americans make their mark? It's not about positioning, it's about racing, pace. Racing. Keep Three, an eye go. on those yep. boat speeds. Big trim, boys. They've done it right there to get over the bow of a Great Britain there All in good. Japan, and we are off nice job, for the final race. Three boats have parked it. Three Big boats are boys. on their way. And it is nice. USA boys, 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 leading by <laughs> Japan and France are also in the mix this time. Great Britain off the line pretty much last with China Japanese will have and Australia. Are yep. they just conserving yep. energy? Do they know they're in the final? Of course they they come back. I think Tony is all mixed up with other folks. Big mistake. Probably head or pop, okay? And it's yep. a nice Watch race Japanese. here yep. into the first mark with Japan mark. just yep. getting inside of Rome Kirby in the USA. To Japan around first, Rome Kirby into second. France, great job by France to get there in third. Yep. And Australia are chasing hot in fourth. And driving. Have a go at nice how move. quick they're going to get once yeah, again go down to that bottom yep. mark. Both guys doing a nice yep. job there. Australia probably yep. need Fine. to get a good right, drive. Keep. Looks like they're in a great path. They might be able to get I'll on the side of France. It looks like yep. they've got a little bit of a problem yeah, trying to maneuver through that jibe. So I'd say they've lost their third spot there, France. Yeah. But it's Japan in to the bottom Good mark first. Trim. Trim. USA Hard in second. And the Aussies are chasing. Yep. Tommy Slingsby knows that it's all still. You still need to gain points. Every yep. point Pressing. matters. Heads up, heads up. Pressing. Here we go, Port and Starboard. Very, very close here between USA and France. France. There's a late, very, very late tack on France. Going to have to get a penalty there, surely. Rome and the USA team were still inside that boundary. Well, that protected boundary. You can hear Billy Besson there. Very, very animated there, surely. That was very close. Very close indeed. I mean, the American boat didn't give him a massive amount of opportunity to take... You know, to, 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 get to avoid him, and he's not happy. We're just waiting to hear from the umpires. Yeah, it looks like at this stage of that we haven't seen a penalty, so they must be thinking it's all clear. So USA, will this be the big move? Can they come across this right-hand side? Local boys, surely they know what's going on already, surely. They are flying. Jody, imagine you're American and you're sailing here right in front of Manhattan. Potentially to go about to win a medal. They've got a Lady Liberty on their wing. They are sailing yeah. for that home team, and here they go into the jibe. Japan look nice yeah. into that middle part of the course. Here, okay? But they have done well. They've got themselves into second by just going to that left hand gate at the top. But Jody, look at the French. Look at the top of your screen, ladies and gentlemen. The French are coming back in that massive puff of wind. The big the big shadow that we see. Billy Basson is fired up. He threw it underneath Rome there in the USA boat on that little port starboard incident. And he is coming downhill nice. at a great rate. Yep. Keep it on the breeze. It's going to be headed they out of the corner. This, uh, yep. They want Nearly third. The There's now. no doubt about that. They want it hard. Oh, but Jody is running out of pressure. You can see the speed drop oh, right here. Okay. Fire up. He's going to do a really late job here. He's going to go past the, past the actual, what we call the ley line. And it's going to be another boat on boat here incident between, I can't believe it, USA and France. They are just chasing each other everywhere they go. USA are going up, Bill France have gone completely past the marks. I'm not quite sure what happened on that French boat. They needed to jive and they didn't. They must have had a problem on board. New territory for Rome Kirby and the team from USA. Nathan Outreach of Japan are not going to let him have it all his own way because they are coming down here in an absolute a beauty of a gust and they've gone from a long way behind to one and a half to two bait lengths to right behind them, straight over the top of Japan. But USA, that is very close once again. Oh my God! The 
Japanese have to keep clear. They're coming in from behind. No rights. They had to keep clear. They were so close. The whole hole was right over the top of USA. And look who's back in the mix. USA, Australia, Japan. This race is not over, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Do not go anywhere. This could be anything. So they have to nail this tack. They've done a really good job separating now with Japan. It was all about a race. Now, USA have to do a good tack and hopefully get Breeze. Can Australia get Breeze from down below? They're up and got one hull out of water. Just dropped it back down as we spoke. They're going to come in towards China here, so they're almost an obstruction in the middle of the course. Japan have to go around China. Australia have to go around China. In the meantime, USA around the top mark and heading in towards the finish for what will be a historic first win for the Team USA on their home water, Shirley. It's not over yet, Jody, but they will get the biggest cheer in Manhattan when they cross that line. What a weekend they've had. You know, they lost their, their vital crew member yesterday, and today to pull this win out the bag would be quite something to take third here in New York City. No That's a day no for memories. There will not be a prouder American than Rome Kirby if he can pull this off. He will be loving it. He's looking back. He's very, very nervous. He's like a young boy at his first dance. He doesn't know what to do. He just wants that boat up and falling and heading in towards the finish here to New York. And that's exactly what's going on. He's just getting it up now. Yeah. Got it. Here, bud. Here they just want to get it up and get it going. Japan has done a nice trip. job of yeah, separating. Trip. Take care, boys. Take one. Press it here. Finish it strong, boys. Finish it strong. You hear it there from Tommy Johnson. <laughs> a lot of pressure on the flight controller. Don't get it wrong now. Yeah. We've got 100 meters to go, and USA are about to get their first win. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, yeah. get up nice and clap because there it is. History is repeating itself. The final will be a match race between Japan and Australia. Both of these teams are desperate to get the win. They know there's a very special trophy at stake. The essence is about sailing being redefined. When you look at the branding itself, the Sail GP name, it has a very distinctive look. It has a very distinctive message that it's conveying, and we needed to connect the trophy to that. We are goldsmiths and silversmiths to Her Majesty the Queen, so we have traditional craft-based methods. The design phase of this process was the longest part of it, but I think it is because SailGP is a new brand. It's new, it's edgy, it's sophisticated, and the trophy needed to reflect that. We've never made a trophy like this. I can't recall in all the years I've worked in this business another trophy looking like this at all. The phrase I came up with, it's like a deconstructed trophy. There's so much movement in it, and it is like you see the dynamic movement of the, the yachts and the sail as they, they plough through the water, and that's what I think works really well. When you see it in 2D, when we had the drawing, you're looking at it going, is that going to work? But once I started making it, and the pieces all came together, it just looks amazing. I think because of its scale, because of its look, it will just become an iconic trophy within sailing, but probably in sport in general. We wanted a trophy that had a very distinctive look that people looked at and said, that is Salt GP. I think the designers have done a fantastic job. It's an amazing piece of engineering, frankly, and it's a, a beautiful piece of art. It's a little heavier than I thought. Wow. Mind you, I guess to win this, you've got to be pretty athletic, so you, you've got to be pretty athletic to carry it around. It's the start of a lot of great things when that trophy gets raised at the end of season one in Marseille. They know that they're going to have their names on a very iconic trophy. People will look back on that in years to come and say, wow, these guys were the first ones to win it. That's got to be special. It's match race time, boat on boat combat. Let's get back out on the water. Your commentators are Jody Shields and Shirley Robertson. Okay, going board. It looks to me like they both want the bottom end of the line because they can shoot right. it down 
Just to glide up the wall, no reason to tackle the moment. Towards the wall, somebody's got to give here. Maybe go behind. Make sure I'm starting to be in any sort of a race. Goes up. Okay, full full speed here. A little bit of a stare off there between the two skiers. Australia have to get in around that marker. Yep, working it down They want to get in behind Japan. There's 34 seconds to go, so they're not going to break the start, that's for sure, because they're a long way from this start line. They're just trying to be the most lured boat. Oh, I think the Australians were trying to be too clever, trying to get that hook, trying to get behind and go really slow. 15, 14. Japan just trying to hold up now. Australia's put his bow down. Can he get underneath him? Get the hook. And I think he's done it, Australia. I think he's got the hook. Japan had to get out of the road. They've said flag. Will they get a penalty on him here? Be very, 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 very interesting. Clear start, clear start. Penalty to Australia. So Australia have to get in behind Japan. Surely, straight off the cup, we have a drama. Oh, well, we'll hear from the umpires, but he came in really aggressively, and it looked like the Japanese team tried all they could to keep clear. So now he has to slow up. So Nathan Outridge and Co can just go flat out towards that mark. Will they try and play a little bit of fox here and push him down into the box? He no, can, he's just going hell for leather. He can go again when the Japanese are one bolt length for him. We see him already beginning to accelerate. And the penalty is off, so we are back to live racing. No penalties for either boat now. Japan leading coming into the first mark. And away they go. So off they go. Very, very short race, race track, remember. Setting up for a dive now is Japan and Australia chasing 33 knots. With very, very uh, light pressure. Keep coming. Uh, uh, no pressure at all. Port Starbin here. Australia's going to go and protest. Will oh, they get it off? Got to come up behind his transom. Umpire. They put a protest in. You can hear that on the comms. Both boats in no pressure, but surely. It is, this is the race is not going to be over until they cross that line. Never give up. There's always a path to get you back into this. We still have a seen the outcome of that protest. Maybe it's all clear. We'll soon wait. This is the start. You see Australia coming up underneath uh, uh, the Japanese boat. We're just never get enough room to get it around. They might have even touched. It's easy to hook. It's easy to hook in these boats because as you turn up, you go faster. In traditional monohulls, you'll go slower, but you'll all go faster. And they did. There's definitely a touch here. You watch Australia come up underneath. Japan had to throw it around. But look at this. We're back to live racing, and Australia have got in front of Japan. To have a nice healthy lead, so they've got into that breeze first. Now Australia in control. Who will get the breeze first, Shirley? Up and falling, and it's almost going to be guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed in this race, but they be falling with both holes in, that's for sure. Have a go, how painful this is. Uh, Five knots. Waiting, look to left hand side. Japan, a bit of pressure coming in on darker water to the left hand side of the screen coming down. Japan are going to get that first, Jody. Yep. Yeah, here we go. It's pressing on this. My right. Yep. Pumping. Don't come down too early. Uh, there's still more ahead of us. So you're yeah, right there, Shirley. Japan have got it. Up and falling at Japan, so lead change, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, minimize dip, we might get down in one. Now in front, Australia. Oh, he's coming right down, now. Coming down. He needs to get that pressure, get them bows away. Good angle and start here. Chasing yep. Japan, who are going to get a little soft of it. Keep the boat flat up. Six knots. Yep. Australia now in the pressure. You'll hold down if you can go back in. Both, both, both boats stay in this pressure yeah, all the way to the fine. bottom. Who would but know? Yeah, let's get Japan yep. in front and parked it up on the tack. Four, up. six knots oh, now. Nice. Can they get Good pressure to the right turn. My rank. Could be early job though, okay? Nathan's pretty happy to, that he's going to get up and go to the right hand side. And as you heard off the comms, maybe an early job to I'll try and stay in that puff that he's just got now, surely. Keep it calm. Link the puffs Stand together. <laughs> Yeah. All that will be running attack. through his head now is revenge, revenge, revenge from San Francisco. He said in all the comps, he didn't think he 
Australia beat him. Australia beat him. He said, we continue on. That's right. Now we lost it because of the gear failure. Is this the race where they're going to come back and finally take a win away from Australia in a final match race? Any opportunity Australia have now is slowly but surely diminishing because you're playing around the front for the final time and heading in towards a finish. What can they do? So here they go towards the light that's shining on the water from Freedom Tower. Yep. Japan are just about to win here in New win? York Try City. One, well done, Japan. Sure that is quite an effort. Yeah, Two. Eight, yep. uh, they flew to victory. They yeah, scored yeah. the rest of the yeah. fleet. That is a result. Just look yeah, at buddy. the joy on their face. Well done. Nice, nice. All weekend. Revenge has been served. So there you have it. Finally, Japan take the top spot on the leaderboard with their arch rivals Australia in second and only five points separating the teams in the middle of the table. That victory here in New York also means Japan moved to the top of the overall season championship, sneaking ahead of Australia by just one point. I think uh, winning this event sort of shows where we're at as a team. You know, the level of improvement we've had has been fantastic. Um, a long way behind Aussies in Sydney, closed the gap in San Francisco, and, and now we're ahead of them. So I think we're on the right path and just can't wait for the next event. This has been an event to remember. It's had it all, high drama and close, intense racing. But at the end of the day, the third stop on the Sail GP calendar belongs to Nathan Outeridge and his Japanese team. See you at the next event in Cows.